at the uh, European Regions Airline Association Spring Conference in Warsaw and speaking with Bertolt Fleck, who's the Chief Executive of Air Baltic. What I'd like to know, if possible, is um, just a summary of how the crisis is affecting you, what it's done to the Baltic market and what sort of impact was it causing? Well, the Baltic markets have been severely affected by the energy crisis, actually starting from September last year. And what we see now is really a Lithuania, the market has dropped by more than 50%, Estonia by 40%, in Latvia probably the local market also by 40%. What we have done is um, we have redirected our traffic from point-to-point -point traffic to capturing more transfer traffic and we have slightly increased our capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in, uh, we have grown our transfer uh, share of the traffic in the beginning of 2008 uh, 10% to roughly 50% in the first quarter. And this sort of focus, from what I gather from our discussions earlier, has softened the impact of the economic crisis an awful lot for you. You mentioned during our conversation that you're thinking that this year will in actual fact be better than 2008 for you, that your profits will be up. Um, is this all thanks to the transfer strategy? I think it is uh, thanks to the fact that we do get the transfer traffic passages that we, that we expect to get. We have reduced our capacity by around 40%. We still have a capacity grow in the Q12 uh, on, on a network basis, and um, this in combination with a lower fuel cost compared to last year actually uh, will provide for a very good historical cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of the terminal development at Riga, there's plans um, for a terminal renewal there. Um, you mentioned as well that you could potentially get involved in that project. The previous government wanted to build a very large terminal capacity of over 200 passengers. Uh, we did that with uh, our competitors here. At the time, that was with uh, TNV, a Turkish uh, airport operator. The, um, as we see now, the new government that has come in uh, to power four weeks ago uh, does not want to pursue this project for various reasons. We still see the need for a new terminal, maybe not of the scale of 10 million passengers, but maybe in the range of 40 million passengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have started the discussions with TAV and with the Latvian Ministry of Transport that uh, we would push this project ahead. In what form and shape, uh, it, that is not quite decided yet. Mm -hmm. It is not totally excluded that we would consider TAV to, to, uh, to run the terminal in Riga. Mm -hmm. And this is basically to develop the transfer facilities and to make it so that you know, you're prepared for this, uh, what has been a, quite a boom in traffic in Riga, you're prepared to kind of push that going forwards and increase export of your business? Yeah, and actually, I mean, a new terminal will actually could be commissioned in, let's say, 2012 or 2013. So we're still looking quite ahead in time in the area of, of our work. Mm -hmm. We will have to do the current external facilities that are, that are planned to come. But we cannot afford to postpone uh, the, the thinking about a new terminal until the crisis is fully fixed. Then, then it will definitely be too late on the existing facilities. Mm -hmm. And in the short term, are the facilities going to be enough facilities are enough for us at the moment and uh, the airport is doing a lot to actually improve the current facilities. Mm -hmm. What we see is that the airport makes a major effort to actually accommodate our change in the business strategy um, with a minimum commission of 25 minutes at Riga Airport, which is not something that we schedule, but mm -hmm. it is something that the airport uh, provides for with direct uh, transport of flight crew passengers from one aircraft to another, direct transport of luggage from one aircraft to another. Mm -hmm. So actually to a during the main conference session that your costs are in actual fact um, very low, they're lower than EasyJet's uh, according to the comments that you've made there. How are you managing to keep the costs low? Well actually it is uh, I think uh, true what uh, Michael O'Leary is saying now very often that the lowest cost price wins. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we have um, never called ourselves a low cost carrier but we have done made a major effort since 2003 to actually bring our, our cost level down to the level of a low-cost carrier in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's not rocket science. You have to fly your aircraft many hours per day. Uh, your pilots have to, uh, have to fly uh, a certain number of hours per year. So our pilots fly 860 hours per second, and in the hours per day, uh, our aircraft fly 12 and 13 hours per, per day. And 
the aviation customer in which is below um, sort of the standard for customer capacity. Mm. And um, finally, looking forwards, when do you think that we might potentially get out of this crisis? Uh, how long do you think that things are going to be the way they are now? Have we hit the bottom? I think it looks very, very grim. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will not get out of the crisis this year. Um, I doubt next year, and hopefully we get out of grim. At this point, it looks like we are down to this actual facility, and uh, I see no uh, no signs of any um, behavior there. Okay, and right now you're not even benefiting from the demise of Flylal. You mentioned that the traffic just has sort of disappeared from that market, and at the moment, in fact, your routes. Yeah, we have seen it very clearly that uh, uh, even on routes uh, that uh, were sort of a two-airline.